Right, physics and sport. Um, I hope for your sake I'm better at this than I was at medical physics. Um, hmm. <laughs> Explain why this hockey player is in a stable position. So this is classic sort of uh, GCSE stuff, isn't it? Um, stability is all about having a sort of wide base and a low centre of mass. Um, so or, or we just need to say exactly that, surely. She's pretty close to the ground. And um, feet are far apart. So she's got a wide base. Um, therefore, large force or torque required to tip her over. Um, yeah. Coefficient of restitution between a hockey ball and three different types of sticks are given in a table. Andrea is going to use stick C to enable uh, the ball to get higher speeds. Evaluate whether she is correct in her choice of hockey stick. Two marks. So uh, you sort of feel like one of these marks is just going to be for a definition of coefficient of restitution. So let's go ahead. Um, quite a lot to write isn't it coefficient of restitution and it's defined as sort of speed of separation divided by speed of approach isn't it I don't actually know that those are strictly the words um, used in the physics textbook but that is basically what it is um, therefore, the closer it is to one, the less energy is lost in the collision, that sort of thing. Um, so highest coefficient implies higher speed of separation for a given speed of approach. So a higher speed ball, a higher speed ball for given speed of hockey stick assuming the ball so it doesn't actually matter but you know if you think of the ball as stationary to begin with um, so yeah Andrea is indeed correct it will give her a faster ball okay uh, the remaining questions are about the hockey ball mass given diameter given determine the torque that a player must apply for the ball to reach a spin rate of 752 revolutions per minute look per minute be careful um in a time of that the moment of inertia of a hockey ball is that so we're finding torque um yeah let's just make sure i've got the right equations um on here so torque is moment of inertia times um, angular acceleration and angular acceleration is change in omega uh, delta omega over delta t uh, so that's all fine we need to turn 752 revolutions per minute into um, into an angular velocity so omega is going to be equal to 752 divided by 60 is going to give me the frequency multiplied by 2 pi that many radians per second is what we need um, and i the moment of inertia actually let's calculate that first um, before we go on to the next thing so 752 over 60 times 2 pi 78.7 and I the moment of inertia 2 fifths times mass 
be careful that's in grams times radius squared and look diameter is given in millimeters so again just be careful with that oh I have <laughs> times 10 minus 3 squared so bung all of that together to get some sort of answer um, so two fifths point four times point one six three times seventy one point three and minus three over two don't forget to square it I've got it 0.29 times 10 to the minus 5. And therefore, torque is it 0.29 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by that change in omega. It starts from rest um, divided by the time taken the angular acceleration chuck it all together and I've got a torque of 3.1 times 10 to the minus 2 Newton meters. Yeah. Okay. Determine the linear and rotational kinetic energies acquired by the ball if it also moves with a linear speed of 42 meters per second. So rotational energy given by a half i omega squared and that is just equal to, we've already calculated i from previously, 0.29 times 10 to the minus 5 um, and omega we've calculated previously as well, 78.7 squared. Zero point two five seven. That's in joules. And kinetic energy is just a half mv squared. Um, Forty-two meters per second. That is shifting. Uh, One hundred and forty-four joules. A little bit more. Okay. Goalkeeper saves the shot with the leg pads. The initial speed of the ball is forty-two meters per second. Just before the goalkeeper saves the shot, the ball is in contact with the leg pads for five point two milliseconds, and rebounds in the opposite direction in bold look don't miss that with a speed of 27 meters per second evaluate whether the leg pads are advisable for protection um so we've got a rebound um yeah so i think uh, what we're going to use here is impulse force times time equals um change in momentum and the change in momentum here um yeah be a bit careful because w what we need is the initial momentum the final momentum minus initial momentum um so final momentum is 0.163 times minus 27 um plus 
oh sorry minus initial momentum which is 0 0.1 oops one six three times 42 so that's our change of momentum um, so I've got change of momentum of minus 12.1 So force on ball is minus 12.1 over 5.2 milliseconds. It's gonna be quite large. Um, 2,320 newtons. equal and opposite force on the goalkeeper's leg uh, I would suggest pads are indeed um, advisable <laughs> that's quite a large force um, so yes yes to pads Uh, I, yeah, I don't think you need to, to go further and talk about the pad spreading that force over a larger area. Um, I think, do we need to go? The ball is in contact with the leg pad. So this is already, that's the size of the force if it hits leg pads. Um, do we need to mention, I wonder, that without the pads, it would potentially be in contact for less time um, and therefore an, an even larger force. I'm not sure. Yes, the pads. Uh, I'm gonna say it anyway, just, just to make sure. Thought pads, contact time may be shorter and force larger. I mean, to be honest though, the, the bigger deal really is pressure, isn't it? The pad spreads that force over a large area of leg so that your leg doesn't get damaged, whereas the ball directly would focus that force onto a pretty small area on your leg and that would be extremely hurty. Um, okay. Sandeep takes a shot. The ball is moving to the right. The diagram shows the velocity of air relative to the ball during its flight what why why would the hmm, not entirely sure why the air would be moving at different speeds on either side of the ball um hmm, creating lift anyway it doesn't really matter uh, it is <laughs> so uh, that's that's it <laughs> as all there is it just, it simply is um, calculate the lift force acting on the ball and show that this is considerably smaller than the width of the ball uh, so we've got a difference in speeds so this is going to be a Bernoulli effect um, lift force uh, the Bernoulli equation is over on the right hand side um, it's that one so um so yeah where where p naught is is the stationary pressure um yeah so let's let's go with pressure above equals p naught minus a half row v squared um pressure below equals p naught minus a half rho v squared that's above that's below um so the thing that's going to cause the lift is the difference in pressure so delta pressure oh, my handwriting isn't getting better is it um is one minus the other so therefore um uh, the p naughts cancel out is is what i'm struggling to say here 
Um, the difference in pressure with below being larger um, is going to look like this. That's a row, sorry, uh, VB squared minus a half row V above squared, um, which is equal to a half multiplied by rho is 1.28 multiplied by the difference in speeds. So it is um, mm, uh, 20 squared minus 22 squared. The way around I've done it, I'm gonna get like a, a negative, it's fine though, it doesn't really matter. The, I'm, I'm going to get a negative answer, but I think that's okay. Um, it's just about the direction, really, isn't it? So minus five point, sorry, fifty three point eight. Pascals. Um, therefore, the force, which will be upwards, is pressure times area. And it's going to be this cross sectional area for the ball. Um, times. Oh, uh, what's the radius of the ball? Radius of ball. Diameter 71.3 millimeters, so pi r squared. Chuck that in the calculator and let's see what happens. Not point two one five newtons. Um, show that this is considerably smaller than the width of the ball. Width equals um, g equals not point one six three times nine point eight one. Um, okay, one point six newtons. So lift is much smaller. All right. Um, you know, as the ball travels through the air, the speed of the ball decreases from 32 to 16, determined by what factor the magnitude of the drag force changes. Um, so drag is proportional to V squared. Um, And half V implies one quarter F. So drag is one quarter hmm. Seems like an awfully easy two marks. Maybe I have to actually quote the equation. Wouldn't, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i gonna put it in just in case, but I think, uh, I think saying proportional is probably okay. Um, I'm gonna say, row a c d all constant so f proportional to b squared just to make sure i get my marks that's it